Lydia's going to get her own chair. Don't need, doesn't need help. Friends, as we tra- transition from this glorious triumphal entry, entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, riding as the king, as people waved their palms and proclaimed him their Messiah, their king, their Lord, the story shifts rather dramatically. And so the mood will feel different from this point forward as we begin to hear what happens after those events. Where's Nate? He's over there. You got a chair? No, he put his chair back. That's okay, I'll stand. Anyone need a script? We good? Okay. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, of pure nard, She broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head, but there were some there who said in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. You will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand before its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be remembered of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The disciples began to be distressed and to say to him, one another after another, Surely not I, surely it is not I, my Lord. It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go as it is written of him. 
but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to have not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Then he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I will drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung hymns, they, they went out of the, to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all will be deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, my Lord, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here. Keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not as I want, but what you want. And he went back to where Peter, James, and John were found and found them sleeping. Simon, are you asleep? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial, for the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say to him. He went away a third time, and upon returning he said, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.
While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. The betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. As Jesus approached the group, Judas went up to him, Rabbi, and he kissed him, and the guards laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching. You did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. The guards caught him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. The guards took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes assembled. Peter had followed at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false testimony against him, and their testimonies did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with human hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood before the assembled group and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? Jesus was silent. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed, the son of blessed one? I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with clouds of heaven. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? And all of them condemned him to death. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and began to strike him, saying, Prophesy! Prophesy! guards took him away and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by, and when she saw Peter warming himself by the fire, she stared at him. You were with Jesus, the man of Nazareth, weren't you? I do not know or understand what you are talking about. As Peter was walking out into the forecourt, the cock crowed. The servant girl, on seeing Peter again, began telling those around her, the man is one of them. Again, Peter denied it. This time, one of the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are Galilean. I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time, and Peter remembered that Jesus had told him before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept.
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders, scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests continued to accuse Jesus of many things. Again, Pilate asked him, Have you no answer? Look at the many charges that have been brought against you. But Jesus made no further reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. There was a man named Barabbas who was in prison with the, the rebels who had committed murder during the, during the insurrection. The crowd came and asked Pilate to do for them, as was his custom. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed over Jesus. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. And what would you have me do with this man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him! Crucify him! But why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, So Pilate did as the crowd wished. He released Barabbas, and then after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus out in the courtyard of the place, at the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They stripped him of his clothes and put a purple cloak on him. They twisted some thorns into a, a row, which they put on his head, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck Jesus in the head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down on, in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him, and then they led him away to be crucified. While en route, they compelled a passerby that was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the school. him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, King of the Jews, and with him the crucified two bandit, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left, and those who passed by derided him. Save yourself, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest and the scribes also mocked him. He saved others, and yet he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried, Eloi, lema sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard him, they said, When he is calling to Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to Jesus, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. 
when Jesus gave a loud cry and took his last breath, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, top, from top to bottom, when the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw how he breathed his last breath, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on, on from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus, the younger, the mother of James, the younger, and Joseph, Joseph and Salome. They used to follow Jesus and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening came, Joseph of Arimathea went boldly to Pilate and asked for his bod the body of Jesus. Pilate, wondering if Jesus was already dead, summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus was dead. When Pilate learned that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking the body, wrapped it and laid it in a tomb that had, had been hewn from out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, saw where the body was laid. Thank you. 